Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Thrive, the sisterhood of success with my guest, Kim Miles. Kim Miles is an MC, panel moderator, and a sales expert who helps her clients deliver critical messaging to their audiences in fresh and entertaining ways. Kim is nothing if not entertaining. She calls herself the love child of Oprah Winfrey and Ellen DeGeneres. She is fantastic. In this episode, Kim talks to us about why it's so important to entertain your audiences to create memorable and meaningful presentations. She also shares shares with us some great tips for networking so you can work the room and make meaningful connections. And finally, we have a really great discussion about why it's so important for women in particular to embrace their authenticity and their authority in order to reach their goals. Kim is a firecracker with a heart of gold. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You're in for high-value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And no one is rocking it out harder than my girlfriend, Kim Miles. Kim has over 20 years of sales experience, a background in performing, and a serious shoe habit. She's a catalyst for conversation. Kim can start and focus critical dialogue like nobody's business. Through her company, My Miles and Heels Productions, Kim is a highly sought after MC, panel moderator, and creative collaborator, collaborator who partners with her clients to deliver critical messaging to their key audiences in fresh, unexpected, unexpected and entertaining ways. She is also the creator of Getting Past Hello, an innovative and engaging curriculum with the singular focus on cultivating lasting business relationships, and also the founder of the second chapter. She had the first chapter of The Sisterhood, which is a networking and skill building series for women to mix, mingle, and mastermind and help each other overcome barriers between themselves and their goals. And I could not be happier to have you here, Kim. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. I think this is such an interesting way for you to um, bring people in front of your great audience. So uh, even though I'm not technologically savvy myself, I applaud your technological prowess. That's for <laughs> Well, I'm not the most technical savvy person either, but I'm so thrilled that you're ha- you're here. And you know, the the whole point of this show is to bring people who are really making an impact in the world, stars in their industry, really, and I mean it, like rocking their brand out there, making an impact, and living authentically out loud. And that is exactly what you're doing. And I highly applaud you for that. You are making an impact in the lives of so many people. And I know this is a little bit um, this particular particular way that you are helping people is a little bit new. So can you talk to us about how this new, how Miles and Heels came into fruition and um, what what propelled you to make that step? Absolutely. So I actually, by trade, I'm a financial advisor and I have been for 13 years. I'm still an active financial advisor. And what I really noticed was that it's a very male dominated industry. And throughout my career, I was always seeking out being with other strong, successful female advisors. So I would go to different networking events. And I really found that um, I wasn't really finding something that truly scratched my itch. Mm -hmm. So I decided to form my own networking group um, through my chamber, my local chamber of commerce. And what ended up happening with that was that it sort of grew into this incredible organization that ran for about 10 years and it sort of morphed into one of the biggest fundraisers and biggest sort of hottest tickets in town to get. It would sell out at 700 seats in about five minutes and that was successful for about 10 years where 700 women would come together, we would network, we would watch a truly unique program that I would produce and MC. And there was one year that happened where I was interviewing um, a local news anchor And it sort of dawned on me that I wanted to take my resources and my talents 
farther beyond my local audience. And so I formed Miles and Heels Productions so that I could share what I knew and what I had to offer with other organizations and other companies. And so that's how Miles and Heels came to fruition. Yeah. So you are a force of nature. I've seen you. I mean, we know each other. I've seen you perform. I've seen you sing, which is another connection that we have. But I've seen you MC. I've seen you be funny. I've seen you be deep and touching and moving. So a lot of your success, I think, is because of who you are. How did you get so comfortable in that role of MC, of interviewing? And because I think a lot of people and probably people that you work with are drawn to you because they don't feel that way and you do and, and they want to learn from you. So how, how did that happen for you? Well, you know, I really appreciate that question. I, I have often been told that, you know, when I run an event or if I'm hired by a client, the secret sauce is me and my personality. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that because obviously that's who I am. I try to live my authentic self and my authentic brand every day. And I think that it does truly come innately to me, um, my outgoing personality, being on stage, similar to yourself, mm -hmm. my whole life, singing, acting, doing stand-up comedy. That's just truly who my personality is. I think people who really know me, there's not a different Kim in the business world. There's not a different Kim in the personal world. Kim is, this is pretty much Kim. Kim is Kim. <laughs> And, you know, take it or leave it or like it or don't like it. But I'm always authentic to myself. And I do try to stay very genuine to my personality throughout all the work that I do for my clients. And I think that truly is the secret sauce. When I'm hired and I MC or I panel facilitate or I am helping curate um, new and fresh content for my clients, I'm trying to infuse my personality and everything. that. I yeah, so I totally agree. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that I help clients do is, I think that there you can go through life and depending on how supportive you've supported you've been in your life or not it makes it easier or less easy to show up as your authentic self. And I yes. think it's something that I think everybody struggles with it to some degree but some people more than others. And I love yes. what you said about Kim is Kim. I you know I think that's that has to go some that's like a bumper sticker. Kim is Kim. Is it like Manny being Manny on the Red Sox? Remember the days of Manny, yeah. you know, Kim being Kim, I just think that's sort of who I am. Yeah, but, I, you know, Kim being Kim is not like, um, oh, she, you know, oh, that's just Kim. It's like, no, no, yeah. this is a powerful Kim is being. Well, thank Absolutely. you. I appreciate it. But I think that that's something that, um, that I love that you said is the private is the same, or I shouldn't say private, personal is the same as professional, because I do believe in private as well. There's the three, yes. in my opinion, there are three layers. There's professional, there's personal, and then there's private, you know. So, um, but I think a lot of people, and it's something I've been working on and learning myself is to bring more of all of those pieces together in one way. And I'll never forget, I, you know, someone in town, in our, in our town had came, came, came up to me one day and said, oh my God, Heather, I got a text from somebody whose name was Heather and, the, you know, someone they didn't know and they thought it was me and they dropped an F-bomb in the text. And she said, I knew it couldn't be from you. And I was like, really? <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, you know, I, I think I need to work on this integration piece a little bit more. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So what would you say to people who are afraid of showing up that way? What would you say? Well, you know, one of my favorite sayings that I've been doing a lot of repeating lately, I, I do a lot of mentoring for women who are really trying to get on the next track of their lives and have ideas, but don't know exactly which direction to turn into. Mm -hmm. And th my favorite saying so far is you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it going. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love it too. And I think what I'm really trying to say about that is take who you truly are and what you truly mm -hmm. love. And let's find a direction for that. You don't have to figure all things out immediately. Day one, you're not going to get it. perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm a work in progress. We're, we're all, a work in progress, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But I really feel that if you stay true to yourself and you stay authentically yourself and you follow your passions, I think that things things will naturally point you in the right direction. And I think sometimes women try too hard to be what they feel other people need or want them to mm -hmm. be, as opposed to being true to themselves. If you have a passion for 
volunteer work, then rock your volunteer work. If you have a passion for social media, then become the rock star in social media. But I think that we're always trying to conform to other people's visions of us. My other favorite saying is stop comparing your inner self to other people's outer <laughs> self because it's impossible to do. I mean, nobody has it all going on at all times in all facets of their life simultaneously because mm -hmm. we're all human. And if we all just treat each other a little bit more humanly and with more genuine sort of sensibility, mm -hmm. Um, we can be freer, I think, to be more genuine. Ourselves. Yeah. And I think that that's something I've been thinking about more as well. And as I get older and go through life to just be more compassionate and less judgmental. And it's a hard thing to do because we're conditioned that way. But I love the inner versus the outer because we're all we all have um, a public face and a private face. And the more you can, like you said, the more you can bring those together, but there are so many risks in doing that along the way. You know, you might get slammed, someone might judge you. And the thing that I always say to my clients is you're not gonna be loved by everybody. And that's okay because when you're yourself, it's like dating. You know, you have to show up as who you are. Otherwise you're gonna attract someone. And then when the wedding's over and you go back home, they're gonna be like, wait, who are you, right? I always say to people, find your peeps, yeah. right? Find your peeps. Find your people that are going to support you and lift you up and that are going to believe in what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with your people that you can be your authentic self right. in a circle. And then that's going to allow you to be your best self. Um, and not to sound, you know, hokey about it, but I just feel that we have so many layers that we need are responsible for. If we have families, if we're caring for elder parents, if we're trying to run businesses, we're just trying to be our best selves. And I think we just need to be a little kinder to ourselves okay. and say that we're, we're doing the best we can. And, you know, ultimately everybody can rock it within their own sphere. Um, and you don't, not every, not everybody's going to, you know, be a rock star in every facet of their lives because all things have to work to gel together to be able to just go on that. Track. Absolutely. And you know, there's, you know, there's, Oh, I'm having, Oh, echo. Bummer. Bummer. That's, can you hear me? Yep. You don't have an echo okay, on cool. my end. So, you know, one of the things I talk to people about also is staying in your zone of genius versus your, 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 your good zone, because we're good at a lot of things because we have to be, you have to be good at more than one thing, but the, the money, the success, the fulfillment is going to come when you really go, where, where you're hot. That's and right. I think that's something that you've done really, really well is that um, you've kind of followed that path of just that exuberant, entertaining, engaging, deep um, performance part of yourself that, I mean, who sells out a $700 or 700 person ballroom in 10 minutes, right? Well, yeah, I think, you know, here, here's the thing. I try to think about what resonates with mm -hmm. me and that's what I try to put out right. there. So for me, if I'm going to go to an event and spend good money, I want to be engaged. I want to learn. I want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's my mission when my clients hire me. They have critical content that they have to deliver. If they have a speaker, if they have an expert, if they have a panel of experts, they have to deliver the content. The content has to get mm -hmm. But if it's not being done in an engaging way that's entertaining, you're not going to walk away with anything. You're going to just think that you listen to a presentation and you can go to any old presentation. My whole concept is that it's a conversation and not a presentation. I try to engage the audience. I try to make it relatable and I try to really bring it down to a much more human level so that we're really all remembering we're here to have fun and we're here to learn. And I think when people are having fun, they automatically because mm. they walk away remembering I had so much fun at that event and I remember that they said this mm -hmm. or I remember that I learned that. Because they're having a good time. Well, I mean, there's that old saying, people don't always remember what you say, but they always remember how you made them feel. That's right. right. And if they love being around you and they, you know, there's there's enough difficulty in the world. If you know you can go someplace and feel warm and fuzzy and have fun, I mean, that's what people want. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So um, talk to me a little bit about who your clients are and, you know, what are some of the struggles that they come to you with that you, that you, you in particular can help them with? So what's really fun about my world is that my clients vary. They run the gamut completely. I work with major hospitals. I work with law firms. I work with uh, educational institutions. I don't know if I'm allowed to, sh should I share who they are? Um, does it matter? if I, I don't care. Um, I've, you know, I've done work at the mass conference for women. 
I do a lot of work at Babson College, of which I'm very, very proud to be affiliated with them. They're an incredible organization. I work with Goulson and Stores, Counselors at Law, the Winchester Hospital and Leahy Health, um, Women in Technology International, different chambers of commerce. Um, it, it, what's fun is that it's fresh and it's new all the time because the audiences are always different. Mm -hmm. What they will come to me and ask me to do is to um, help them deliver whatever their theme or message is. So case in point, Holy Cross, I've been going to their Women in Business Conference. Now this will be my third year. They are they run an incredible conference for both alum and current students. And every year they'll ask me to do a unique icebreaker to help mm -hmm. the alum network with the students and vice versa. And then they'll also ask me to deliver some... Uh, practical tips or knowledge that uh, the women can walk away with. And so it really, it does run the gamut. Often people will have very interesting speakers that have interesting content to, to deliver, but they may not be the most dynamic public speakers. That oh, yeah. a lot. So they'll bring me in because they want me to do sort of a fireside chat interview style with them and help mm -hmm. bring it a little bit more to life. Again, critical content, with the entertainment factor. I always say that if Oprah and Ellen had a love child, it would be me. And <laughs> that has served me really well for a long time because people get it. You know, Oprah was really responsible for delivering important critical content. And Ellen, while she's very, um, imp you know, she has important messaging, she always makes it fun and she's very mm -hmm. fun. So I feel like hopefully I'm a good cross section between the two. Oh, I definitely think so. You were wonderful. So what about just the average entrepreneur who's not, maybe one of the bigger um, clients that you have, what are some tips that you can give them to help them be more dynamic, whether they're networking or, or presenting that, or to break that, you know, I know you have the icebreaker. What are some ways that people can, because you and I are both performers and we know how to do that and own the stage. Right. And, you know, that's what I help. I help my clients with that as well, but you know, December. And I've actually whittled that down into a top 10 list that I come mm -hmm. in often and will present to groups of women. Um, and basically what it is are the golden rules or the golden nuggets for people to comfortably present themselves or to network. Mm. It's about really owning your yourself and what your mission is and being able to give people effective tools to go into any setting and to be able to cultivate lasting relationships beyond meeting that person at that event. Mm -hmm. Case in point, um, one of the tips that I often give is if there's going to be an entrepreneur who they know that they need to go out and network, it's just it's a necessary evil of what we do. You have to constantly expand your circles. It's really about effective networking. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not about going and collecting a hundred business cards. It's about being right. collective in the people with whom you'd like to forge those relationships. And it's about what you do after you get past hello, hence the name, mm -hmm. and what you're going to do to forge that relationship going forward. So for people who have trouble maybe just kind of entering or inserting themselves in a conversation, I'll give them little tips or tools, little icebreakers themselves so that they can feel more confident to really get into the mix. And also the other tip that I give them is the art of graceful extraction from a conversation. If you've ever gotten stuck um, speaking to somebody who perhaps is, everybody's important, but you know, you're there to effectively network and other people are too, to be able to extract yourself from a conversation that perhaps is you know, monopolizing your time when you'd rather work the room and meet a lot of people. So, uh, so what's one, so give us one, what's like one thing that you can can say to gracefully extract yourself. A graceful yourself. extraction. Mm -hmm. You broke up there for a second. So graceful extraction. So, well, I always say that you could use some of the obvious, excuse yourself to use the, the ladies room, um, get a cocktail and offer somebody to get them a cocktail. Mm -hmm. The two that I like the best, quite frankly, are what I call thoughtful introductions, which is to introduce that person that perhaps you're trying to extract from to another person to bring somebody else into the fold so that it'll make it easier for you to extract gracefully. But I will say that my favorite one is the good old fashioned, honest to God truth. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. I'm actually going to mix and mingle and try to meet some other people, but I hope you have a great evening. Whatever happened to the truth, you know? <laughs> That's not offensive. It's not a right. way to insult anybody. I believe that when people are at networking events, 
they're all there to do the same thing. Exactly. I was just going to say that if you say that and someone is a business person, they are going to get it. They're, you know, that's what you're there for. You're there to make it. It's, it's an appetizer to the relationship. That's right. It's not the relationship. That's right. You have to, yeah. as, as I like to say, you have to put on your oxygen mask first mm-hmm. before you put on other people's oxygen masks, meaning you have to know what you need first to be mm-hmm. able to effectively work the room and get something out of that. So if you are going to, you know, be courteous and help everybody else out, you'll walk away from that networking event, not having en- taken anything away from it. Yeah. And one of the things, the tips that it works both ways that I like is if you compliment somebody on something like a piece of jewelry, if you notice something unique about them and you say, oh, I noticed this and I just wanted to come and tell you, but it works the other way too, that if you want people to talk to you, you can do that as well. Like you always have your fabulous heels on and I see the red one in the background there. But if you have some fabulous signature thing that you wear, if you wear a pin or something, it gives other people a reason to talk to you as well. So that kind of works both ways. Absolutely. Conversations, icebreakers. You know, I, by nature, I'm a funny person. So humor is often the tool that I'll use. I appreciate that not everybody has that level of confidence and or the skill set to make humor work in their favor. Sometimes it can come off as awkward or um, doesn't really do the trick. But for me, I will often use humor as both an icebreaker or an extractor. Um, but certainly it's always in the same language that I use, whether I'm speaking in person or I'm effectively writing or, you know, following up with emails or, or texts or anything like that. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit more about Miles and Heels Productions. What are, what are some of the things that are on the horizon in some productions that you're going to be doing? Well, I just came from a meeting uh, from... Of course you did. I just had a meeting. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, I was over at the Winchester Hospital. We're doing our annual Spring into Pink on April 7th, which is a wonderful program that brings awareness to the community and surrounding communities for both Winchester Hospital and Leahy Health. And this year's topic is about um, menopause and all of the crazy things that go on with the roller coaster of life and how to deal with all of the facets of life um, while kind of maneuvering through menopause. That's being held on April 7th. And if you go to the Winchester Hospital website, tickets are on sale for that. Also, what I have going on right now is, of course, my second chapter, Sisterhood, which is happening on both the North Shore and the South Shore. It's happening on the North Shore on March 30th and on the South Shore on March 23rd. And this is the last week of registration. So if people are interested in more information about it, they can visit my website, which is at milesinheels.com. And what the second chapter Sisterhood is, is basically an ongoing skill building and networking event to bring people at sort of a very basic level who are trying to re-enter the workforce, perhaps after having been at home with their children, um, people making a career change later in life, widow, divorcees, people who are really looking for that next step and a really safe, comfortable setting with which to network um, with other people and to try to get their bearings and some basic tools to get them started in that search again. It's a great event, major camaraderie, always cocktails, Mm -hmm. skill building, speakers, tools, um, takeaways, and a lot of great networking. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show. There's still more great content to come, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about a new course I've created called Close Any Room. You may have noticed that all of my guests know how to speak about their businesses in a clear and compelling way. But that's something a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. And it's something you need to know how to do so you can convert your audience into more sales. And that's why I've created this course. It's a six week audio course to teach you how to craft a signature talk so that you can authentically give value and close more of your audience from the stage. In the class, you learn how to create a clear and compelling point of view, how to organize your content and give great value to your audience without giving away the farm, how to structure your talk so that it seamlessly closes your audience at the end without feeling salesy. And I also give you templates and instructions how to create marketing materials, a speaker sheet, and all kinds of sign-up sheets when you're giving your talks. And finally, what everybody's hot to know, I also give you tips and resources on how to find speaking gigs. 
It's an all-inclusive course so that you can start closing and selling more from the stage. And as my free gift to you for tuning into the podcast, I'm giving you my free webinar, also called Close Any Room, and you can listen to it at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. And it will give you lots of tips and information to get you started on how to create that signature talk that sells. Okay, we're going to get back to the show now. There's still more great content to come. Thanks for joining me. So I know you've had this passion for helping women for a long time. You've had women helping women. Now you have the sisterhood and, and you do a, a lot for women. What, what really, what draws you to that? What, I know you, t- and you talked at the beginning of, you know, being in a male dominated industry. Why is it so important for women to help each other? Why are you so passionate about that? I mean, I know a lot of people are, but you've really committed a lot of your energy mm-hmm. to helping women. You know, it's interesting. I, I'll never forget when I was speaking at the very beginning when I launched my website a couple of years ago, and I had somebody that I really respected, who's a uber successful entrepreneur. She took a look at it, and I was so concerned that it skewed too female my website. Mm-hmm. And I tried really hard to make sure that my brand strategist and I um, made the language um, all inclusive, right? But what I realized was. In essence, I don't want to be so concerned about that anymore. Of course, do I do work with unisex audiences? Of course I do. Plenty of people hire me to work with unisex audiences. But because my passion is for women in business and female entrepreneurs, and really for women being able to be their best selves, I myself am a woman trying to make it in an effectively male-dominated industry in my financial advisory practice. But more importantly, as a female entrepreneur, When you surround yourself with other strong female thought leaders, there is only goodness and collaboration that will come out of it. Every other woman, most other women, they they want to help each other succeed because they equally get something out of it. There's nothing that gives me greater joy, and I mean this in all sincerity. If I have introduced someone to somebody else, or if I've given somebody a helpful tip or a hint or a resource, and they reach back out to me and say, I can't thank you enough for the X, Y, Z or the introduction, because that was the one step that they needed to propel them on their direction, their trajectory. I just feel that that's the greatest compliment or gift that I could possibly receive. Because I think back to all the women and the people, men and women, who helped me when I needed help, whether it was through my financial advisory practice or through starting my own business. I'm in essence running two businesses. And a lot of people were willing to help and I wanna give that back. There's a very reciprocal um, desire to want to help people be their, their best selves. Yeah. And I think that there's something about, I I love men too. And I think they're, you know, I think it's a disservice to women and men to discount, you know, how men and women can work together. But there is something about a community of women coming together in that I think that there's a little little more um, emotional openness and a little, so, and that's what we, that's what we need. You know, we can't expect, we can't expect that from, from, from men who maybe are not, that's not how they operate, right? And it doesn't make them good, bad, or otherwise. No, it's, it's just there's this connection that women have. It's never about male bashing. You know, it's no. never about male bashing. I mean, I have so many clients who are male and I yeah. get along with them. Great. I adore them. This isn't about male bashing. What mm-hmm. it's about is that for some, for whatever reason, you know, women have a harder time with their confidence level. They'll think mm-hmm. twice before they'll say something. They'll think twice before they'll do something where men tend to just go for it. Uh What I want to teach women is that they are completely within their power and within their realm to act the same way. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to speak at Women Women in Technology International. And we're going to be doing our Getting Past Hello program with a gender bias, meaning Mm -hmm. talking about the fact that there's a huge gender bias in STEM, right? Science, technology, Mm -hmm. yeah, and we need to empower these women to be able to be on a level playing field, excuse me, with these men that they're sitting at the table with to get the jobs, to get the promotions and to be taken seriously. There's an epidemic out there that really women tend to second guess their own Mm -hmm. talents and their own value. And I want to eradicate that. I want to eradicate it by having, I mean, you know, (laughs) people say just and sorry, I'm going to give you a great example. I need to tell this anecdote because I think it's brilliant. 
I just spoke at the Corridor 9 Chamber of Commerce, which is a conglomerate of about 52 communities. They're out in Marlboro. Amazing organization. They have something called Business Forward Females. And I did my Getting Past Hello program there. And after the program, a woman came up to me. And she said, I wrote this book and I want to give this book to you. I thought you were great. I loved what you said. I really, really resonated with me. And I said, I'd love to see your book. And her book was called Sell Like a Girl, which I adored the title. So she handed me the book. And as she handed me the book, she dismissed it by shrugging her shoulders. And she said, it's just a personal account. And I said, Mm. oh, I stopped her right there. And I said, hold on. I said, you just gave me this gift of your book that you took all this time and energy to write, and you did it. And then you just, in one gesture, discounted the validity of that book. Mm -hmm. Not just a personal account. This is your personal account. You had something important to say, and you made it happen. And she, you know, sort of, this is a stranger saying this to her, but I think it resonated with her. So if I was able to help her shift that focus or her delivery, I've mm-hmm. person, you know, I love it. I love it. And I love that you, um, I mean, th- some of the work that I do with people is to help them get to the core of what their, what their mission is, what they really want to accomplish in the world. We have, it's a difference between goals. We all have different goals. Like you might want to write a book. You might want to speak at the Boston or the Massachusetts women's conference. That's a goal, right. but to have a clear sense of a deeper sense of mission, yes. um, is that fuel in your belly that allows you to go after those big goals. And um, I love that you said, I want to eradicate this in women. And I was like, there's her stand. That is her stand. That is the mission right there. And it's the part about what I do with people that I love so much because when they get down to the core of that, it puts, um, you know, I always talk about your brand stand as being the head of an arrow because it, focuses your attention and it gives you that fuel to shoot through the noise and kind of avoid the distractions. And even if you make a mistake, and I don't really think they're mistakes, but even if you make a choice that doesn't turn out how you thought it was going to turn out, if you have that mission front and center, it it doesn't, you're still moving in that direction. So I love it because, you know, we're having this nice chat, Kim, you and I are having fun. We're, you know, we're exchanging all of these nice ideas. And then as soon as you started talking about it, it was like, whoa, this whole other level of energy. It's just, I love that when that happens. And I totally believe you when you say it. Well, I also feel that I've worked with, I, I mentor a lot of women. They'll hire me to mentor them to just kind of clear out the white noise like you talked about and help them hyper focus. And then of course, when they're a little bit more focused, I would hand them off to somebody like an expert like yourself and take them to the next level. But we're really at sort of basic kind of soul searching with me. And there was a woman that I was working with and she kept talking to me about what she used to do. And that she felt that she wanted to go and and either create a job or create a business um, that was rooted in what she used to do. She would mm. talk about it and she would talk about it and she would talk about it. And then all of a sudden she said, well, I have this other idea. I said, well, what's the other idea? Mm-hmm. She started to talk about it and she lit up. I mean, she her whole demeanor changed. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'll call her Sally. I said, <laughs> I said, you are, we're focused in the wrong direction here. I said, we mm-hmm. have to focus on the thing that impassions you. I mm-hmm. said, you're focused on something that you think you should be doing. You're trying to conform into what you think right. you should be doing. Why aren't we focusing on the thing that lights you up? And she said, well, because how, how could I ever do this? Why would I think I could do this? How could I make a business out of this? I said, that's why you're here. It's right. to help you figure that out. So for me, I just feel like what you said, which is I totally, that, that whole tip of the arrow, all of your messaging needs to support what your mission is. And that's great. Tomorrow. And, and, you know, you've taught me so much. I mean, I, I hired you in the very beginning, you know, you, you were <laughs> instrumental in helping me help me hyper-focus. And I've always looked to you as a, a peer and a colleague and, and a leader. And I think that, um, you know, you've really helped me to become more hyper-focused and every day. I think I become even more hyper-focused I, I yeah. what I don't want to do anymore or what I, I'm not as focused in where in the beginning, I think you think you're going to do it all. And it's slowly, it's becoming much more narrow. 
Thank you. And, I, you know, I'm a ginormous fan of yours as well. So thank you for the compliment. And I just wanted to say that you're right, that as you go along, that's another thing. I think people, they don't, they don't see the, they, they're like, I don't know how this is going to work. Like the person you were just talking about, how can I make, you don't have to know the whole picture. Right. You just have to, you know, when you, when you're driving at night and say you were going to drive from Boston to Florida, you can't see the highway from Boston to Florida. You can only see the 20 feet in front of you where the headlights are pointing, but you're on the highway to Florida. And you don't have to have it all figured out, but you have to know you're going to Florida, right? You don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it going. Perfect way to wrap things up here. I love it. And I love, love, love you. I think you are a superstar in my book. You are changing the world. And I love that you're changing the world right where you are and, and helping the people that you see every day, because that's, that's what it's all about, that connection. And the work that you do is really, really changing lives and, uh, and doing it in the way that only Kim can. Kim is Kim, right? Kim, Kim, Kim is Kim. Kim. Thank you for inviting me to be on. This was really, really fun. And now I know how to log on to Blab. So I <laughs> there learned you go. something today too. So that's exciting. So Awesome. And before we go, I always ask my guests in this moment, as we're communing together, looking at each other, what are you most grateful for right now? Oh, unequivocally, people like you, all the people who have supported me for years, who have come and bought tickets and sat in the audience and listened to my jokes that you've probably heard several times and you laugh every time. Well, because you make it so funny. <laughs> I, I'm just grateful for the people who have allowed me to believe that I can do this. Easy. That's an easy answer. I'm emotional when I say that. Uh, That's, fair clip. <laughs> I'm That's the truth. That's how I feel about it. I'm not here because of myself. I'm here because of everybody who helped me. Oh my wow. goodness, Kimmy. So wonderful. And you know, I, th th this is why people love you because of your heart. You know, you, you may be funny, but it comes from a place of love and that makes it even more genuine. Love so you, you're the best. I love, you. I love you too. And as always, I always thank my audience for joining me by offering mm -hmm. my free webinar on how to become a profitable speaker. And you can get that at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. Do it. Thank you Do it. so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. Love you. Mwah. Ciao. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Thrive. I loved having you here. I love having you as part of my community. And if you're enjoying the show, I would love it if you share it with your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever they're hanging out. I also want to let you know you can leave me feedback or comments. I love hearing from you. Just post those at heatherpaduska.com. You can also leave suggestions for topics that you'd like to know more about, or if there's someone you'd really like to see on the show, let me know that as well. Okay, until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye.